Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to add infinite scrolling to your table view. Uh, this is going to be a standalone video, so it's not part of the Swift and Firebase series, although in the next part, in part 7, we're going to be adding pagination, which will use a lot of the same code. Uh, so infinite scrolling is basically, uh, it lets the user um, scroll to the bottom and automatically load new posts at the bottom there. Uh, so this is just like a nice user experience, so that the user just keeps going down, you see the spinner there, and uh, items are automatically added to the to the bottom. Uh, so this avoids the user having to click a button or something to, to force load. Uh, this is just good user experience. A lot of apps use this. So this is what we're going to build and let's jump into the code. So in the starter project what I have set up is the table view with some items loaded and when you scroll to the bottom nothing's happening right now so we need to add a bit of code that will detect when we've hit the bottom of the table view. So I'll do that in a delegate method called scroll view did scroll and this is basically going to be called any time the user scrolls in the table so let's just get a couple of values here called offset y one of them we'll call offset y and it's going to be equal to the scroll view content offset y coordinate and then let's get the content size or let's call it content height actually scroll view content size and height and just to make sure we understand these, I want to print them out and show you what these values look like. Offset Y and content height. Okay, let's run it. So we see it starts off, the offset Y is 0 and the content height is 704. But as we scroll, the content Y is increasing. And the content height increased a little bit because uh, we added it loaded new tables into the cell here, um, and that increased the overall height of the table. But really, this offset y is what we want to know, and it's negative if we go up, and it's positive if we go down. It's like the distance between the top of the table and where we scrolled so far. Um, so that's going to be useful to know when we calculate if we're at the bottom. But another thing we're going to need to consider is that that value is kind of here at the top and we want to know you know is it towards the bottom have we scrolled towards the bottom so in our calculation we'll say if offset y is greater than the content height but if you look at these values it's never going to be greater than the content height so we're actually going to sub subtract this the height the frame height of the scroll view so kind of like subtracting the height of the phone um, every time from the calculation and we'll say print begin batch fetch here. Okay, I'm just going to remove those values here. And if we run it this time, we should see begin batch fetch at the bottom. Okay, that's good. We got it at the bottom there. Um, we'll notice though that there's a whole crap, like a whole million <laughs> bunch of printouts when we hit the bottom there. And that's because it's going gonna, it's gonna to run this every single time that the user scrolls and this is true. So we actually only want it to run one time. And to do that, we'll add a flag called uh, fetching more. And we'll just check if uh, it's if we're not fetching more, then let's add a function called uh, begin batch fetch. And we'll say fetching more equals true. And then in here, we'll call that function. So it'll begin batch fetch. Now, if you run it, we should hopefully only see this line printed out one time. Okay, we scroll, and there we go, one call out. And that's good because we don't want our API to be called, we don't want to be calling our API like 100 times in a scroll view or something like that. That would just be really bad for the server, it'd be bad for the user experience as well. Uh, so we just want to call that one time. And now we're in fetching mode basically. So this is activated to true. This is not going to run again until we uh, set this back to false. So in this function, we can put pretty much any asynchronous code that we would want to put um, for fetching new items. Again, like fetching an API or something like that. Now, we don't have an API to fetch, so we'll just fake it with the dispatch queue. We'll say dispatch queue main async after now plus two seconds. Uh, just one second, maybe. Okay, so this is run. This is going to run asynchronously uh, after one second. So that's kind of like mimicking a API call or something. 
Now let's add our items. Uh, right now, the items are just a list of integers. So what I want to do is just add a few more integers, like 16, 17, 18, to this list. And we'll do that with map. I'll say new items equal uh, self items count to self items count plus uh, 12 or something. And I'll say map uh, index in. That's going to return the number. And I just want to turn the index because it's just an array of integers anyways. So here we go. That's new items. We see that's type int array. Okay, so now we can do self items append contents of new items. So this is going to just put it right at the end, this whole collection of items. And then we can say self fetching more equals false. And then lastly, we just got to reload the table view to insert these items. Let's give that a run. So let's see what happens. We scroll to the bottom and more of them load. It takes a second, right? Because we defined it to be a second. So that's actually pretty long uh, in user time, I guess. But we'll see it's, it's adding the item to the bottom nicely. Okay, so that's pretty much, uh, that's pretty much it. But one more thing that would be nice to do is just add a loading cell, um, you know, a spinner at the bottom. So what I've built already in the starter project is just this um, loading cell with a spinner center aligned in the cell. Nothing to it really. And I have it attached here. And in the view controller, I've already registered the loading cell as loading cell here to the table view. So let's go down to the number of sections. I want to increase that from one to two. And let's just say if we're in the first section, so if section is equal to zero, then return the items count. But if, let's say else if, the section is the second section, which is actually one, and we're fetching more, then return one cell. Otherwise, return no cells. And then in the self row at, we also need to add a check there. So let's say if index path section is equal to zero, then we can move this code there. Otherwise, we want to return a loading cell. So we say with the identifier of loading cell, I'm going to cast it as a loading cell. I can remove this bit, but I just need to say spinner uh, start animating. And that's just because activity indicators in table views, they can act funny because the cells get uh, you know recycled or something, and I think they stop animating. So we just want to tell start animating. And last thing we need to do is just when we begin our batch fetch, we want to reload the first uh, or the second section or section one because uh, so we can see that animating. So let's say table view reload sections. And it requires an index set. So let's say index set integer one and we'll say with no animation okay and because we're setting fetching more to false down here and then reloading the table we don't need to reload the section explicitly it's going to already take care of this uh, with the reload cell so if we scroll down here you should see we got our loading cell that looks really good uh, it's important to have something like that because you want the user to know that we're you're loading new data and that's why they can't scroll beyond a certain point or something so perfect. Um, one thing I want to point out is right now we're just subtracting the scroll frame height when we're calculating if we should batch fetch or not. Uh, and that's working out okay, but it's happening right at the end, you know, right when we hit the bottom. So that's kind of annoying. You got to hit here and stop. We could multiply this really by any value, let's say three or four or something. And that'll mean it'll start loading a bit earlier, uh, earlier down the table view. So let's try that we should notice that it's loading earlier. Yeah, you can see that we're not even seeing the um, indicator right now because it's loading so much earlier. So that's nice, right? But you don't have to, the user just thinks it's infinite, which is great. And really, a one second uh, delay is pretty long to get new data. Most API calls, like when we hook it up to Firebase, it's going to be very fast unless the user has poor internet connection. So let's just say it's 0.25 seconds as opposed to one second. Um, we'll see that it's pretty much an infinite scroll. Yeah, yeah, check that. Out. It's just going, it's going forever. So yeah, that's good. Um, hope you guys learned something. That's it for now. 
I'll be back with part 7 real soon, and we're going to pretty much do this, but hook it up to Firebase. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys.